Hello, I'm Jonathan, also known as the Medieval Genie, and today we're going to be talking about gauntlets. Specifically, trying to see if there's ever a possibility of having five-finger dexterity, but with decent protection. So of course, for reference, let's start with the simple unprotected hand. So the various grips that you'll be that you have with weapons, and you'd be looking at ones like this, which is like a sort of a hammer fist, you know, you're holding your item and you're just striking with it, and your range of motion is about that far to about there, and then doing whatever you need. Then you've got something that I've heard Scalagrim calling the handshake grip, which is more like this. This means that you can extend more compared to up here. This is as far as my wrist goes for something like a straight on or a thrust. Whereas here, it's almost completely straight. And then after that, you've got the sabre grip, which is your thumb on top, which provides even more movement. And besides that, sometimes you might see individual grips, like uh, putting the finger over the cross, if you've got a cross guard, to do something like hold a rapier or a small sword. So that's what you're doing with the open hand, and that's what you want to get as close to as possible, while still, of course, stopping the hand from getting chopped open or broken or something. So then we start looking at this. So this is your lesser protective type of gauntlet. The exact one I've got here is the Red Dragon brand. And these are perfectly adequate for nylon fencing, so you can see full finger dexterity. Excuse me, they do the, they sort of offset the fact that they need to move a lot, but they still need to protect by being a bit bulky. So they stick out quite a bit and they might interfere with certain other items of equipment and other small niggles. Sometimes you get basket hilts and complex hilts which aren't designed large enough to accommodate these sorts of gloves. But overall, I haven't had many, if any, problems with movement. Thing is, while these certainly provide enough movement for this grip, this grip, and this grip, which means I can use it for pretty much any weapon that's got a large enough hilt or, you know, has enough open space to fit this big hand, uh, the big problem is it's less protective and it can't be used, definitely not against steel longsword, but really not very well against any steel weapons, except maybe, I don't know, about rapier and small sword because I don't do those. So, then we look at stuff that does protect well, but isn't going to have that flexibility, which is this. So these are heavy gauntlets. The exact model I've got is the Spez Heavies. So then putting my weapon back in again, you can see, here's this grip. No, this isn't the second grip. I cannot move my thumb down to do a full hammer grip already. And I try the second grip. And it's sort of naturally half there already, and then the sabre grip. I'm sort of fighting against the glove now, so by this point, the plastic you're seeing here, but my thumb is more like here, around the edge. Uh, so it's a very limited range of flexion, and if I wish to do more of this sort of thing to angle for a thrust, or getting a straight kind of cut, uh, the range of movement I've got is more like is this, you know, I can, you can see it pivot a bit so there is some movement, but overall it's not very good and I can't even do a hard swing of this machete I forged myself yesterday, uh, incomplete, because I'm worried it's gonna fly out of my hands. I just can't grip well enough of it. So it's got the protection, but not the movement. So the question then becomes, how do we make a bastard child of the two? How do we get the flexibility of these less protective gauntlets and then the protection of these sorts of gauntlets? And I think it's not actually too difficult. If we look at the Red Dragon gauntlets for a second, they are not too badly designed. So you've got the overlapping articulated plates. Let me put this down. So you can see, as the finger bends, let me get you in the light better, as the finger bends, you can see the articulation, there is a degree of overlapping. So that means there's the protection it does offer quite fully, and you've got the solid plates, there's some sort of hard plastic in there, but it's a bit thinner, I think, and then a layer of foam, and then just, you know, the base glove for the finger, so it all stays together well enough. 
This is a perfectly fine design. And it's got side protection on the hand. It covers even uh, this bit. It's just something I included in my review of these Red Dragon Gauntlets. So you've covered in between the, thing, the index finger and the thumb. This is really good. But then you look at these. So it's got thick plastic. And then it's got some sort of thicker foam. And then, of course, there's the base glove again. So, in concept, there's not too much difference between them. Except, of course, the fact that you've got that sort of almost like a really poor man's lobster type of hand design. If this was done in individual fingers, I think it could work. So, we look at these. Uh, imagining without this sort of over whole hand kind of design, and it was cut into individual fingers designed in a way, so the actual shape is like these gauntlets, but the design of protection in terms of the materials and their thickness as well as how they're attached, like these gauntlets, it could work. Now I've seen there have been attempts at this already, so we've got two versions. Firstly we have the armadillo gauntlets, which looked very promising, and I'll show you the, some two pictures. So here, firstly, you've got what they were showing when they were demonstrating it and testing it beforehand. And yours, this is the, what it looked like, and it's very well designed. It could actually protect well. And they even had a video showing a person getting whacked full strength with a steel sword, a long sword at that, the most hard-hitting of the steel swords, apart from maybe a Zweihand or an Executioner's sword. But yet it still protects well enough. The only problem is, then you look at this second picture, and that shows the end result. And I saw reviews which were saying things like, the Red Dragon Gauntlets protect better, they're not worth the money, they're rubbish, they're useless, one titled, worst gloves in HEMA. So that gives an idea that it didn't go well. But when they were doing the testing, I guess they cheaped out on the design and materials compared to the test version, because it looks like actually what they had going before they shipped them out, the original design, did the trick. It wasn't some sort of mythical thing. You can see it in front of your very eyes. And then the second design that I saw was the Pro Gauntlet, which looked promising, but, I mean, we've been hearing rumours about it, and it's one of those mythical unicorn kind of tales. It's less like a pro gauntlet and more like a no gauntlet at this point. I have no idea if it's ever going to come to fruition. But it shows that these sorts of things can exist. So for now, we'll probably have to work with gloves like these. But I reckon that in the next, say, five to ten years, especially if historical European martial arts will grow sufficiently, I reckon that we will have decent gauntlets for it. Tell me what your thoughts are. Do you think they can work? Do you think they can't? I don't know. My thoughts to say in, finally, eh, in finality, uh, I reckon that for longsword and such things, maybe it will be too difficult. But for things like sabre, rapier, arming sword, those sorts of things that aren't quite as hard hitting, I reckon you could have gorn that's suitable for steel, but with that five finger articulation. So that's it for today. Have a good day, and uh, let me know any other videos you want. Ta-ra for now.